Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Final Fantasy 14 101. I've been making mention recently of creating another beginner friendly series for Final Fantasy 14. It's been five years and you know what? We have a ton of fresh new blood leading up to Shadowbringers between the WoW Refugee thing, Twitch Prime, and so many more people trying out the game. Going back to the basics seemed like a good idea. So for that, I'm going to be answering some of the simplest things in Final Fantasy XIV that you may not necessarily know as a player. For this video, we're going to be tackling a very simple concept in Final Fantasy XIV, positionals. Now keep in mind that the upcoming expansion Shadowbringers is going to be releasing on June 28, 2019, and there is a chance that some of this information may be changed or become invalid at that point. If it does happen, we'll just have to revisit this video. Until then, let's press on. Now, if you're playing certain jobs, primarily melee jobs, you may notice some skills have additional damage or effects when performed from a specific side of the boss. The usual terms for these are positionals, and they will usually ask the player to perform the attack from the rear of an enemy or its flanks, aka its sides. Now, the concept is simple enough, but there are some little tricks to help players recognize the rear and flanks of a boss and how important it is to actually be doing positionals. So first up, when you target an enemy, you may notice a ring appear around that enemy on the ground. This ring is used to determine the orientation of the enemy. The arrow designates the front of that enemy. While it is usually aimed at the player currently tanking, many enemies may turn and face other players or directions to use attacks in front of them. Some bosses you may want to stack on this point for specific strategies, but generally you want to leave this area to the tanks so big frontal attacks are aimed away from the party. Obviously, opposite of the front is the rear. Unlike the front, the rear has no lines in the target ring, outside of a small swirling line around the targets that are always circling there constantly. Any attack that gets a bonus from attacking from the rear will get that bonus as long as it's within this blank part of the hitbox we've outlined. The flanks are adjacent to this, starting where the double lines appear next to the rear. Flank positionals get their bonuses from being within the 90 degree cone on either side of the enemy. Now a common thing I see newer players do is shuffle completely to the flank or completely to the rear on enemies to meet those positional conditions. On larger enemies, it gets pretty hilarious, because it can be a hell of a run. A more common practice among advanced players is to dance along this line between the flank and the rear. This can help reduce movement and on endgame encounters, help you stay in a tight position for any attacks you might have to deal with. If you find it difficult during certain bosses to hit these positionals, or the way you're fighting the boss just makes it so it's going to be impossible for a few seconds, don't forget about your True North roll action as a melee DPS, which will let you earn positional bonuses regardless of your orientation to the enemy for a short time. Again, roll actions will probably see some changes in Shadowbringers, so this may not be applicable in the future, but we'll see. There is one more thing. Some enemies are what we call omnipositional. This means that you receive all positional bonuses regardless of your orientation with the enemy. This will have them basically have that two line ring around their entire hitbox with no frontal arrow to designate where they're looking. This is common with bosses that have their rears inaccessible, bosses where you cannot change their orientation, or enemies within deep dungeons such as Palace of the Dead, or exploration zones such as Eureka, where party composition is inconsistent and soloing is a possible thing. Don't worry so much about dancing around enemies in this case, it doesn't matter. Now those are kind of the bare bone basics that I wanted to hit on in this video, and I was going to end it there, but it wouldn't be a Mr. Happy video if I didn't make it a little longer. So I received a few suggestions when this was brought up on my Twitch livestream, so I want to make the video a little longer to cover some of those follow-up questions. The first one I got was, what about if you're deep inside the hitbox on larger enemies? Is it still going to work for positionals? And positionals work the same inside the hitbox. As long as your orientation around the hitbox is correct, based on this little thing that I've provided on the screen right here, being deeper inside the hitbox will yield the same results. The next question I got was, should I hold an attack until I can hit a positional? 95% of the time, no, you don't want to hold an attack until you reach the positional. It's best to be proactive about trying to get into the right position so you don't miss them, but if it's absolutely impossible because of some sort of fight mechanic, don't delay your attacks. This is only slowing down your overall damage output. As of this video, only one skill exists that you absolutely want to save until it's possible to hit the positional, and that's Ninja's Trick Attack. You do not want to mess that one up. Trust me. The next one I got was, what do I do about enemies that turn on their own? Pretty annoying, right? This simply requires a bit of game knowledge and it's an expected learning curve if you've never done a boss before. Again, try to be proactive and learn what bosses and enemies usually turn to use their attacks. Then position yourself in advance. These are also optimal times to use something like True North so you can ignore the positionals altogether. 
And finally, a question I already posed earlier in the video, how important is it to even do these? Well, like I said, if it's not possible because of an attack the enemy is using, it's not super important. Surviving is definitely more important. However, any other time, you should be striving to land every positional attack possible. Miss enough of them, and it eventually adds up to basically acting as if you didn't use a skill or didn't use multiple skills throughout the fight. And that adds up pretty quick if you're missing a positional every two to two and a half seconds. Now, I'm sure there might be additional questions in regards to positionals that you might have, so be sure to put them in the comment section of the video below. This video has already gone on a little longer than I wanted it to, but like I said, I had to meme on myself a little bit. But anyway, thank you for watching one of my Final Fantasy XIV 101 videos. If there's something you really want to see in the video that you think would be beneficial to new players, be sure to put it in the comment section of the video below, and well, we'll see what we can do about that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one, and until then... Take care.